Pastor Pam, what are you up to? Oh man, I'm trying to make a decision here, and I'm, I'm just not sure what to do. Well, look at you, look at all mm. that stuff. It sure looks interesting, maybe I can help. Well, I'm sure you could, because I've never done this before, um, but the idea is that you have to decide which block to pull out of the pile so that the whole thing doesn't collapse. Look at, there you go, so it doesn't fall down. That's a scary decision. Yeah, I know it. So, how do you go about making decisions? Me? Oh, uh, let's see. Well, a lot of times I just go for it, and then I spend the rest of the week regretting it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that's, woo, I would say that I wish I could do that, but I'm thinking now, no, nah, but yeah, nah, usually... Oh my gosh, I'm like, hem, I hem and I haw and I weigh out. So if I go this way, this is going to happen. And if I, I do know, this, I this know. will happen. It's just a game. Oh, this does well. not have consequences. Okay. This is the one time That's, it's a, maybe an easier you sure? choice. Okay, yeah. You're, no, 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 you're right. I shouldn't get all serious well, about this, yeah. you know. But so we like do. Church. <laughs> Yeah, church is hard. We do, though, get confronted with decisions that are really serious, yeah, you know, yeah. with real serious consequences. Well, it's this whole last year. I mean, we're making decisions, you know, lifestyle decisions and how we're going to have church. And, you know, we, we've got people's health almost in our hands. Not really, but, I mean, we have to make decisions that include uh, their health. That's really yeah, true. That's a, that's, those are tough yeah. choices. I'd and rather you, play a game. Would you? Okay, well, you go. You're next anyway. So, um, so yeah, if we stop to think about it, and an even bigger picture than that, beyond that, we've, yeah. we've always had one, at least one very important, life-giving choice to make. Yes, that's And one true. of our readings this week in the lectionary oh, even talks about that. So true. You got mm -hmm. it. Joshua 24 in the Old Testament, he lays out really clearly for the people that it's time to make a choice. It's a life or death choice. It's time. No more hemming or hawing. Yep. To use your words. And yep. he says this. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that are your ancestors served beyond the river in Egypt and serve the Lord. Hmm. That's yeah. pretty clear. And you it's know what? Clear. Right after that, it goes on to say, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day, right now, whom you will serve. Yeah. And Joshua, pe Joshua tells the people that it's it's time to make a decision, make a decision. you know, about which way your life is going to go. You can't just keep messing around. You have no. to decide where, yeah. what side do you want. Yep. Yep. And so he lets the people know clearly what he's decided. He says that wonderful uh, phrase, a lot of people know it by heart, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yep. There's a lot of good cross-stitch kits that, a lot of that good cross -stitch. do that very same. Bumper stickers. Bumper stickers, yeah. It's a hard choice which one to get. Yeah. Cross-stitch. Or, or bumper, bumper sticker. I know, tough. It's rough. Tough decision. Yeah, right there. So, you know, we certainly don't have the same kind of challenges that the Israelites did back in those no, days, no, right? No, no. But we really do have to decide about the gods we serve. Oh, I mean, even now, yep. we have gods that get in the way. Oh, I'm, I know. I know what you mean. There are things in our lives that can displace God at a moment's notice. And and people aren't even careful about it. They, It's almost like they're blatant about choosing not God, the yeah. God. Yeah. yeah, you know, we we don't necessarily think of them as gods, but small g. Yeah, it's small g, but but, but I get it. You know, I think um, well, it's like sports. Yeah, you know, Sunday yeah. sports. Forget about it. Or or greed, money, yeah. fame, uh, oh. possessions. Yeah. Oh, all that stuff. It yeah. becomes more important than anything else. That makes it God with a little g. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. Yep. And I know that the Israelites really thought they had other tangible gods right. too. Like one was called Baal, right. and they would bring offerings and actually do burnt offerings to Baal and pray and ask right. for favor and and relief. But but those other gods that you were talking about are right. just as real, and they're still around for us. Oh, yeah. And and if you talk to people about it, they. The last thing they would think of is that it's a god in their life. That it's an idol. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yep. It just becomes so ingrained. And yeah. We, we need to be Joshua. We need to be able to tell them to make a choice. That's right. Point it out to them. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. At some point. So, in indeed, we really, in some aspects, we are really not that far separated from the ancient people in the Deuteronomistic history. Excellent. Did you get that? How many syllables that was, was so that? That's so good. You're, you Deuteronomistic. win. Deuteronomistic. Six. That's a six. You win. You, you see if you can top that. So life was really different for them then. Right. But we still need to guard our hearts from those same same dangers. I know. I know. It's not a, it's not life or death like the enemy's going to come over the hill with, you know, arrows and stuff, but it's life and death in terms of 
everlasting life and death, mm -hmm. or God or no God, or self or others, or love or hate. I mean, we, yeah, it's, it's not the enemy coming over the hill, it's the enemy within. Oh, you are so right, yeah. so right. It's hard to recognize that that, that enemy yeah. within is, is in there working I against know us. I know well, I got to tell you, as for me and my house, <laughs> I choose life. How oh. about you? You've said it really well. I, I want to do that too. I want to choose life uh, every day. Every yeah. day I want to choose life. Yeah, and Put choosing away those other things. Yeah, choosing life always means I choose God. That doesn't mean I have to put away my pretty clothes or anything, does it? Maybe you just shouldn't wear them all at once. Okay, not all at once. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick try. one outfit one, to wear. One, one. Yeah. So, That's only um, fair. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's only fair. Okay. It's only fair. Well, look so, at you. Are you doing well? With I this don't thing? know, but I'm really glad that choosing God isn't. You're gonna, isn't like choosing which one of these blocks to pull I'm out. Like, I choose not to pull any more. So you're going to leave this to me. Mm -hmm. Oh man. <laughs> okay. God right. would never let us down. Uh, like, like people have let like, him. Down. Like people have have done. Oh look at you. Oh. Wow. oh. Ah, it was bound to happen. Yeah. And it's okay. It's just a game. Okay. And we can pick up these pieces and we can put it back together. And, and we get a do-over. We get a do-over. Yeah. But the choosing God, you got to choose God. You got to choose God. Right. All right. Uh, this has taught me a great lesson. And thank you for uh, also the lesson in uh, figuring out how to not play this game. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Great example. Perfect. Appreciate it. Yep. It's good. You bet. You bet. <sighs> Welcome to Lord of Life. Welcome to worship. The Lord be with you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, in whose name we say, Amen. According to Joshua, the 24th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, long ago your ancestors, Terah, and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Holy wisdom, holy words. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I know I promised you more from John's Gospel and the Bread of Life writings, but 
Preparation and current events led me toward our lectionary today from Joshua. We don't often bring preaching from the Old Testament, so I want to take a moment to orient us regarding this book of Joshua. Joshua is located right after Deuteronomy, which ends with an account of Moses' death and a tribute to all that he accomplished only as a result of God's favor as God's prophet. The books of Joshua through Kings are often called the Deuteronomistic history because they are read as a unified and chronological perspective and written under the influence of Deuteronomy. I say perspective because they are not to be considered actual historical events reported in order, but rather a collection of accounts of events told to teach historical events. In this chapter, Joshua has called the people of Israel together to worship at Shechem, which has become a central and important hub, a center of religious and political power. He's called them to remember God's great gifts of salvation, to recall the wondrous acts of their ancestors, accomplished through God's gifts and God's favor. Joshua calls the people to recommit their lives to God, to forsake all other gods, and then he sends them out with a benediction and a call to service. Reverend Dr. Agnes Norfleet of Shandon Presbyterian Church in Columbia, South Carolina, describes this worship and what Joshua does with the Israelites in parallel to our service of baptism. She says this, We stand by the font as if near the Jordan River and remember with thanksgiving the saving grace of God. Celebrate the passage of liberation through the water and recommit ourselves to depend on God and to nurture one another in faith. This gathering place, Shechem, is a place of deep meaning and profound symbolism for the Israelites. It's both of geographical importance and is a busy communal hub, and it is of great theological importance because God has finally delivered them home. The Israelites are no longer wandering nomads living in diaspora. They have a land to call home, where to build their houses, to plant and harvest crops, to lay the foundation for generations to come. This is worship with both a call and a commitment attached. God has brought you and your land, Israel, to be mindful that in the days ahead, you remember this is God's doing and not your own. You belong to God. Turn away from all that would keep you away from the one true God, who is the author of your salvation, the compass for your future. Don't forget what God has done for you, because without God, you would have perished long ago. In the days to come, remember these graces given to your ancestors and to you, and do not become complacent. Do not begin to congratulate yourselves and your prosperity. Beware of an attitude of entitlement, for God is the sole source of your good fortune. Without God's hand, you would have nothing. Without God's grace and mercy, you would have nothing. And without God's grace and mercy, we would have nothing. This is a very good time to hear this ancient call story and to once again remember our own calling, reaffirm our own faith, the mercies we are given and granted in our own baptismal experience. In the waters of baptism, just as if we were standing on the banks of the Jordan, we receive these gifts which cleanse us and at the same time buoy us up to renew us again and again for a life of service to one another, to the neighbor, to the stranger, to all of creation. This remembrance hits home in a special way in the days we are living right now. Another wave of a deadly virus that we thought was on its way out. The island country of Haiti trying to recover from another massive earthquake followed by a torrential flooding. Afghanistan falls to a regime known for its brutal and inhumane treatment of its people, particularly women and girls. And these are just some of the large-scale global issues. 
Add to these our own personal struggles and challenges, and it's easy to become overwhelmed. And I think to myself, aren't I fortunate that I witness these things from a distance in the safety and security of my community? And at the very least, I am shielded from the dangers, real and present, for the women of Afghanistan. And now that I no longer live in California, earthquakes are not nearly so much a concern. The virus, well, we are all dealing with the virus, one day at a time. In an interview this week, I heard a man in Haiti proclaim that it is just too much. Haiti cannot take any more. And I thought of the Cat Stevens song, Trouble. And the first line of the lyrics goes like this, Trouble, oh trouble, set me free. I have seen your face, and it's too much, too much for me. Lutheran Disaster Relief is hard at work on behalf of the people of Haiti in this most recent disaster. The ELCA has kept a presence in Haiti for over 20 years. Lutherans are not first responders, but they are the long haulers, those who stay after everyone else is gone, to continue the work of aid in places that experience disaster. I also learned earlier this week that through Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service, some of the fragile, frightened, and heartbroken people who are able to leave their home in Afghanistan will be coming to relocate right here in Arizona. As I see the images and hear the stories of people fleeing and begging to flee their own homelands, because their very lives are threatened, my heart aches for them and I am drawn back into the stories of ancient Israel, wandering in the wilderness, and how their daily needs were met only by their absolute reliance on God. All of this gives me pause, and I wonder, as a called, baptized, forgiven, and beloved child of this same God, where do I fit into this story? What is my place? What is the work of love to be done here and now, today? And I start by reminding myself that all that I have comes from God. And my baptismal calling and command is to love others, to live my life in a way that others will see a reflection of a loving and merciful God in my actions and in my words. What will it be like for those who are leaving behind everything familiar, and in some cases, other loved ones and family members? What kind of experience will they have as they learn the ways and cultures of this new place? Will they feel welcome? Will they feel safe? Will their hearts beat with a rhythm of hope for a future that is truly free from oppression and hate? I hope so. I pray so. As da Jacob declared in Shechem, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. His sermon was a reminder to the people of Israel that God was their sole source of hope and life. Our baptismal promises remind us that we are named and claimed and loved, but also that we are the hands and feet of the one who gave all for us. The promises of baptism also come with the command to love and serve as Jesus loved and served. Let us make good use of those promises and bring the gifts of baptism alive for others to witness. Let us respond to those who will be among us, far from home, frightened, travel-worn, and traumatized by violence as our baptism calling commands with the love of Christ, a love that is not only for a certain few, but for the world. Let us not forget that all we have, our possessions, our land, our freedom, each breath we take, are gifts from a generous and loving God who is merciful and gracious. In our baptism, we are called again and again to remember 
whose we are, and as we remember, let us be the hospitable ones, the ones willing to share what we have with the diaspora desperately searching for safety and hope. Let us remember our calling to love the stranger and welcome them with the love of mercy and grace, which is the love of God. Amen. As we continue with our prayers of intercession, I'll end each petition with Lord in your mercy, and I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God of courage, bless all leaders of your church. Give them voices of strength to cry out with words of hope and courage into today's world of tragedy and pain. Give feet to the gospel so that those who proclaim justice, your justice, will walk that path with those in deepest need. Give us courage to never shy away from the power of your word and your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Fires are still raging, gracious God. Floods have hit all over the world, and now an earthquake in Haiti and a tropical storm. God, we cry out to you for relief. We cry out to you for help. Give us a way to get where we need to, to bring supplies to those in deepest need. We pray for church organizations, Lutheran Disaster Relief and Lutheran World Foundation already there, already doing your work. Strengthen them, provide for them, protect them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We cry out for the people of Afghanistan for the women and young girls who are so scared that their lives that they have fought these last 20 years for are going to be taken away. We pray for strength and courage of those who are still there. Help them know they are not forgotten, that their cries will be heard, even as their government has failed them. You, O oh God, are a strength and power that cannot be stopped. We turn to you, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We cry out to you for those who are voiceless and abused and war-torn and battered and addicted. We turn to you and lift up the sick and the lame, the lost and the least. Touch us all who need your healing touch. Give this world that groans in grief and pain healing and wholeness. Let us never lose sight of the gift of your mercy and love. God of compassion, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and Lord, and in whose name we say, Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should 
everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth, all creation, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. You are indeed holy, gracious, and merciful God. Everything is filled with your glory. We give you thanks for your promise and presence, which have sustained the faithful in this and every generation. Above all, we give you thanks for Jesus, born of Mary, who in word and deed announced your gentle rule of justice, reconciliation, and peace. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it for all to eat, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, his resurrection and his ascension, we pray for his coming again, even as we cry, Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all your promises may come to us and your whole creation. Come, Holy Spirit. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our friend, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, O God, now and forever. Amen. Make us bold, O merciful God, to address you as our Abba as we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace and peace. Let us pray. Most gracious and generous God, you open your hand and feed those who hunger. Grant us faith to trust your wise providing, courage to share our bread, and grace to pour out our lives in service to others as Christ poured out himself for us. Amen. The benediction is this. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. May God look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Amen.